In this installment of Washington Legal Foundation's Legally Brief, the second in a series of three videos on the Google Book Settlement, Andrew McDermott, a policy analyst at the Center for Democracy and Technology, will express his organization's opinion that the settlement should be approved, but with sufficient protections for consumer privacy. First off, I'd like to thank the Washington Legal Foundation for including CDT in this series. We've been looking closely at the Google Books settlement for the better part of a year, and I'm happy to share our perspective. As a general matter, CDT supports the settlement. While we recognize that it is an unusual and expansive class action settlement, we believe the services it envisions will be extraordinarily valuable. Increasing access to millions of books is a laudable goal that should be encouraged, and the dramatic expansion of access the settlement envisions would not be possible without such an agreement. Of course, expanding access in a way that is consistent with the rules of class action law is important, but in large part because CDT's particular expertise lies outside class action law, we focused our advocacy on the implications of the settlement, specifically its impact on reader privacy. In July, we published a report making specific recommendations for privacy safeguards Google should include in the new services. And in September, we put those recommendations before the judge in an amicus brief. Both are available on our website, cdt.org. Now, there is no doubt that this is an unusual class action case. And one of the unusual aspects is that neither party stands as a proxy for the public. When we think of typical classes, such as users of tainted drugs or people who reside near a polluted waterway, we think of a group of people whose interests align reasonably well with the public interest, such as the public interest in having safe drugs or clean water. But here, that's not exactly the case. Neither the public nor a reasonable proxy for it was represented in the settlement negotiations. This is understandable since the settlement is the result of a two-party negotiation to resolve a copyright dispute. But nonetheless, the resulting agreement does implicate the strong public interest in intellectual freedom and reader privacy. Google would in many ways be stepping into the shoes of a library, providing public access to browse and read millions of books. Libraries are highly protective of their patrons' privacy. In fact, 48 states and the District of Columbia explicitly protect library patron privacy by statute. CDT's advocacy, as well as that of other advocates like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the ACLU, and a coalition of library associations, has focused on ensuring that such privacy protections endure as the library moves online. CDT's argument to the court under the original settlement was that the judge had the duty and authority to protect the public interest in reader privacy by incorporating our recommendations into an order approving the settlement. Now, though, with the extension, Google has the opportunity to reconsider not just the agreement, but also its broader implications. In light of CDTs and other advocacy, Google has already made some privacy commitments in a preliminary Google Books privacy policy, but those commitments do not go far enough, nor would they be enforceable under the court's ongoing jurisdiction of the settlement. Let me give some examples. The new services necessarily give Google the opportunity to collect a great deal of data on what books users search for, browse, and read. Google's current commitments don't adequately describe how long that data will be stored, how Google might repurpose it, or under what legal circumstances it might be disclosed to third parties. No one wants someone looking over their shoulder monitoring what they read and protections against this potential invasion of privacy should be built in from the start. Critically, we don't think that the privacy commitments we suggest would affect the terms of the settlement, nor are they likely to affect the terms of a revised settlement. In order to sufficiently protect reader privacy, Google should reconsider our recommendations and make more concrete privacy commitments that the court has the authority to enforce. Providing real, enforceable privacy protections would go a long way toward ensuring that readers won't be forced to choose between valuable electronic access to books and the privacy of their intellectual pursuits.